Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Kenneth Moy. My Stackalon project was a just project I wanted to call a Twitch visualizer. The idea what behind it was to use the Twitch API to grab data to kind of see trends over time for channels that are you know, very popular or just have a lot of followers at the time. So to start it off, I guess I'll just do my own channel. As you guys will see, I'm sorely in need of friends because I have only seven followers. <laughs> so that in itself is a thing. Um, but all this stuff is really grabbed from the API. You see, you see follower count, view count, partner status, games, uh, user. I can even go to the link itself from Twitch. So there's a lot of information from it. Um, but like I said, the goal was to really go for um, trends over time. So to see, let's say, with someone who had thousands of followers, see where they maybe spiked here or there, or see how maybe a video they showed influenced their trends and their views. Um, but before going into that, I wanted to just hit one thing first with the API. So Twitch had a problem where people were scalping followers. So they would take their full list of followers and kind of take people from there and just maybe send spam emails, um, send notifications, all those kind of things. So they kind of rate limited every, th every request to 100 followers max. So that posed a problem because when I used Axios to do my API calls, because I originally wanted to do this purely in the front end, um, there was a problem where you would only hit 100, but you would also need to grab data from that call to hit the next area, um, the next link within the API to kind of circumvent that problem. And to do that, there was a part where I had to do recursion inside of a promise. And that in itself is kind of just mind boggling. But to show you guys an example of how that is done, it's actually not too bad. Um, so if we see here, you can actually store a recursive function within a, um, a promise. So you can just pass it in and then call it and it'll actually do the recursion within the promise. So by doing this, you can grab data from the first call to the API, use that data um, for the, the dot then, and if you need to, you can go into the recursion as you see here, and that actually works very well. So recursion actually works within a promise, and if you ever need to do something like this, that's where the code's right there for you to look at. So to go from there, um, I picked out a user who has a good amount of uh, follow data and video data, so I was originally going to use someone from the class, but I decided not to since they had no stored videos. So I decided to use this guy, New York City Rep. So another thing that I ran into is that these API calls are expensive, and they take a lot of time, as you can see here. So this is what I was talking about with their 100 um, limit. So you see it has to go 100 at a time, then keep going to their next, keep going to their next, and keep going to their next. And this ultimately takes up a lot of time. So uh, my idea of just going by the front end kind of got like just scalped here because it just took too long. So if we see here, it took 20 seconds to do it and it's just too much. Oh, there was a problem right there. There was a bug right there. But as you see, it took 20 seconds to do it and that's just a lot of time that cuts into user experience. And the way I had to circumvent that was actually saving everything to a database like you see here. So I'm getting all the user information from a database as well. After I get it the first time from all these calls, as you see, it says um, no database data grabbing from the API. So all those 20 seconds to get all that stuff um, is stored into the database. And the second call only took six seconds. So it saves a ton of time when, by doing all that data, um, storing it to a database. So if you guys ever have a ton of data, you guys can do something similar to that. But as you see, like, you can see all this data here from the API. And like, for example, this person had a ton of people just join August 2016. Maybe they had a video at the time. So this kind of is what I was going for um, to see more. But it's just a little unruly to see at maybe like 2 million followers. Because you see, even at 3,000 followers, it took nearly 20 seconds to do everything. And 
as you see here, you can also get video data uh, for this, and that's really cool as well. Another problem that we ran into was that a lot of the graphing render the graphic rendering programs um, or API that we ran into had a problem binding with React um, because when React first renders, it doesn't actually have anything there when you first enter. So when a lot of these graphic uh, programs try to bind to something on the DOM, it doesn't actually exist. So I, we had to, um, well, Classman and I looked for a specific API to do something like this, and we found one called um, Rechart, Recharts, which actually does stuff with Re React Redux. So that API is actually pretty cool as well. But as you see with limitations here, Instead of seeing something that's actually like pertinent to the day, you see the entire title of the video. So that's another limitation that, we, that I ran into as well. Um, but yeah, I hope for this to really grow and um, get more data, because you see it's extremely limited in what it can do right now because of how um, the API limits us. But I think a general takeaway from all this is that um, is the first thing is with the promises, where you can do recursion inside of them, which is very interesting. And the second thing is to kind of use databases to your advantage if you have large data sets. Like I said, I cut down load time from 20 seconds to six. And for a user, that's very important. So that should definitely be something considered when you're doing a program or an app. And those are the two big takeaways. And I hope you guys enjoyed it.